Hello everyone, I'm Kevin Hand. And I'm Candidate 409. And we're back to uh Dang it Rampa If, aka uh part of Dang Rampa 2, technically, but uh yeah. Anyhow. Is this you or is this me? Huh? Time had certainly stopped for Mukuro Ikisaba when she activated her stand the world. <laughs> It was as if everything around her had frozen perfectly still. In the past, she was known as the ultimate soldier. She had experienced this feeling before, during her time with the mercenary group Fenrir. In situations where she was surrounded by a hopeless number of enemies within the jungle, or a desert ruin, the charging enemies seemed as though they were frozen in time. She allowed her to claim decisive victory for her in all her battles. But this wasn't a battlefield, so why did this familiar sensation activate once again? Also, yeah, that would have really fucking helped you when you got stabbed with the spears the first fucking time. <laughs> I guess because you just genuinely didn't expect it. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, if it just, like, subconsciously activates, then, like... Yeah. Oh, well. She probably should have seen that coming, but but because of plot reasons, she had to die. Well, yeah, obviously, I know, I know that, but I'm just saying that, like, you know, where was that in the first game? In order to understand what had happened, Mikuru slowly <laughs> tried to assess the current situation from within the frozen world and, like, punched a cat and, like, broke it apart and started fucking with people. <laughs> Jinko and Mukuro are both children of despair. Jinko and Oshima, the true ultimate despair, harbors a far deeper darkness within her. Also, I think we, uh, can we use that word here? I mean, I think that's kind of been claimed by a different <laughs> series by now, so... Though their last names were different, for some frickin' reason, Mukuro is Junko's older sister, connected by the blonde of blood. She cooperated with Junko's hopeless plan and impersonated her on the pretense of participating in the killing game alongside her classmates. According to the plan, Mukuro was supposed to oppose Monokuma, who her sister is controlling, by the way. And be locked in a dungeon as punishment. Isolated from the others, she would then escape the dungeon and perform various acts intended to deprive the students of hope. That was the role she had been assigned. Also, is that, is that literally what she went into this with? Because clearly that's not what happened, or clearly wasn't the plan, Yeah, no, actually. that's... Yeah, no, that's... Yeah, no, that's... That, so that's that, what that she was told. True. Okay. <clears throat> Makes you wonder why she believed this, because as far as I know, there is no dungeon. There are, um... Other room... See, like, the... I don't know why she believed that. I'm assuming that there's tunnels in the school that they built for Monokuma to get around, and I'm assuming she would probably be able to fit in them, so that... Like... What, pro what, what, pro about? what probably happened is that she got locked up in a dungeon, in quotes, and just, like, because, like, again, she's clearly not supposed to stay there, so, like, yeah. she probably just got locked up in a dungeon, got taken away, and then, like, that's it. But, uh, yeah, that is, that is true. Muguro did, that is, that is true. Okay, no, I was just wondering, because, like, I don't think we ever, like, heard what they went into this with, so... And Mikoto succumbed to his headache. Junko ordered her to see if the shock had caused him to remember anything that could make him a liability. He woke up as she was tending to him, so she made a small talk with him, but she didn't notice any change in his behavior. Until this point, she was certain that there shouldn't be any problems. Nothing could possibly go wrong! Except, you know, since it did. She stomped on Monokuma like a sister had ordered it to do and flawlessly spoke the line she was taught to memorize. Afterwards, she would fall through a trap door in the into the dungeon and remain isolated from the other students. That was her role. She hadn't done anything wrong. There were no problems. There were no problems. She repeated that to herself over and over like a silent prayer. But in that moment, that frozen moment in time, what she saw was not a trap door. But, okay, yeah, we've made this joke. One of them had skewered Makoto through his side. Why? Makoto, why are there spears? Gangnir. I would have died if I hadn't moved. Did Junko mess up the plan? No, Junko would never mess up. Was she trying to kill me? 
Me? Makoto save me? Why? Why did they say my name? Did his memories come back? Did I not realize that? Uh, did I make a mistake? Is that why Junko got angry? Is this punishment? Is this my fault? Junko tried to kill me. Junko, like, tried to kill me? <laughs> kill me. Kill me. Kill me. That's what I'm feeling right now. I, I feel that. Yes. Slowly. Like, kill me. <laughs> yeah. Slowly, time came back to her world. See, there it is, I said it! <laughs> Mukuro could feel that her, <laughs> her face turning pale as she slowly looked toward Makoto. The student stream rang throughout the gym. <laughs> Sayaka was probably the first one to scream. But who screamed first didn't matter to Mukuro. Makoto, why? Makoto was the ultimate lucky student, but he didn't get so lucky this time. Also, he didn't get lucky earlier, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, he had been a classmate for the past two years, and how he was a sacrifice to despair. Not long ago, he had given her a answer of sorts during a conversation in the nurse's office. He was just a pawn in the plan his sister had devised. But now, a feeling of doubt began forming in Mukuro's mind. You're up. I... What? No, I know the video. Okay. What, what did I want from Makoto? As a heart churned less restlessly, she continued to think. In return, I promise if I do decide to kill someone, it, like, won't be you. Was I impersonating Junko then? Or did I really mean that? I like how she already became the mask. By yes. the way. That was fast. <laughs> that was kind of fast. When did I start feeling this doubt? Or just now? That moment he saved me? Or when we spoke in the nurse's office earlier? Or when I first confronted him about this killing game before his memories returned? Or was it before even that? Mukuro stood back and the and overwhelmed as Makoto slowly opened his eyes. The sphere still impaling him through the sides. Also, like... Yeah, I guess they were spears because they, like, were just kind of stuck in her afterwards. I was about to say, or are they, like, still connected to, like, the walls and stuff? But no, they, they were, like, super spears. Ah, Mukuro? Makoto, are you okay? Mugura was now no longer in person in the ultimate fashionista. Looking up from the from the floor of the gym, Makoto asked, "Why, why did you dress like Junko?" He was smiling. Maybe he couldn't feel the pain anymore, or maybe he was being affected by something else. But regardless, Makoto ignored the fact he was dying just to give up Mukuro his mom's smile. Um, you know, I mean, I had to butt in here, but that's kind of a big deal you got right there. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you're safe, Mukuro. As soon as she heard Makoto's weak, fading voice, something's like Mukuro snap. Can I, okay, I actually have a question that I need to bring up. Um. Yeah, what's up? Even, even knowing, uh, like, even if he got his memories back... How did he immediately, like, know and figure out that she was Mukuro and not just Junko? I, can I be frank with you? I There's don't no think reason. this is very well written. Okay. Like, I've never read this before, but, like, I, I, I'm reading this and I'm like, okay, somebody ships Mukuro with with uh, Makoto and just wanted to write some fanfic. This really isn't that good. It, like, it's, like, substantially, like, it's... It, it, a, lo a lot of it doesn't really, like, like I'm like, it, it, sure, but that is a little bit of a stretch. Yeah, like, that's that's what I was wondering, because I was like, like, I'm not, I'm not bashing this, because so far, like, I think it's fine. Like, it's not- I don't hate it, but, like, I- like, it's so- it- like, I think it's fine, but I'm just like, yeah, why- like, how did he know that it was Mukuro, even though, like, he would basically have no way of really knowing that, because, like, like, I don't know, I guess, like, they did, like, I don't- like, 
Like, maybe, but, like, it seems kind of, like, that, it seems well, unlikely is what well, I'm saying. Well, then again, they're... Actually, actually, I just had a thought. Mukuro and Junko do have very distinctive faces. They do, but, like... I don't know if that would Probably immediately just cause... just recognize his, her face. But when he realized, wasn't she facing away from him, though? Because she was about to... She was oh, okay. arguing about with Makuma. Actually, yeah... Yeah, okay, he, yeah, uh, that, that, what, that's my only explanation, is they have very distinctive faces. And well, yeah, like, face. no, like, I, I, that's what I'm saying, like, it's plausible, it just seems kind of unlikely that that would be, like, the first thing he remembered. Yeah. Or, like, I don't know, but, uh, regardless, I'm, I'm holding... I don't like the insinuation that, that, like, I, I, okay, so this, this isn't canon, uh, Obviously, no, I know. But a lot of the things that happen are implied, uh, but uh, slash are implied are canon. Yeah. Like the Mukuro thing, that pretty much is canon. Like that's that's true. And a few other things are pretty much canon. But okay. um, I, I don't like the insinuation that Makoto had a crush on her before all this. Yeah, that seems kind of weird. Like that seems really like. Okay, the biggest complaint people have about this is that Mukuro comes off like a really big Mary Sue, and if for that one line alone, I kind of see it. What the like, the Makoto and like. Like the... oh oh yeah like oh it yeah. was something else. You're dying. You're dying, Makoto. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Like that just that just ruined this whole experience. Not because I I ship him with Kyoko or Sai. It has nothing to do with that. No, that's just so stupid. But I think but that I think there? it's like I don't know. It seems pretty canonically like said that at least like at the start of the first game, or at least like like perhaps even before that, like she was probably not the one he had a thing for. No, def no. It does Mukuro have a crush on him? Yes, that's pretty much canon. Sure, whatever, but, but like... Uh, but, but, uh, the other way around? No, no. No. You can't tell me that. that. No. Uh -huh. That, that, that's, that's, uh, that's just stupid. I don't like that. I don't like the way, I don't like that. And I, I, I get this that. trend doesn't continue, is what I'm trying to say, because, like, I just, I did, I did, I don't, I don't like that. I didn't like that. I will hold my judgment until the end. Uh, no, no, I'm not saying the story is shit because of that one line. I'm just saying they better not keep that up. No, yeah, that is kind of stupid, but, like, seeing as she's the POV character, like, I'm guessing that's kind of going to stick around a little bit, but, I mean, like... Uh, I could, I, I, I'm about to say, I, I, like, it's just my whole point is I can kind of see why people don't like this. Yeah, like, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know if the story it's Because that's, that's one part, like, uh, granted, it's probably going to be a big part, but I don't know, like... I'm still like I still don't know where the hell this story is going. Yeah, so I don't know at least, where this is going either. At because, least um, that I, is interesting I did to me. I read this before and I got to like this part and I stopped because I just didn't feel like reading anymore. Not okay. because I noticed that line or pissed me off. That's actually the first time I noticed that that mm. was that happened. Yeah, no, that's but fair like enough. yeah, I don't know. So I haven't read further than this basically. So like okay. I don't know where the hell this is going. But yeah, I just wanted to point out that I didn't like that. No, I get that because it it seemed kind of weird, but that was really weird. Yeah, I mean, like obviously the part. Like, I mean, like it should be obvious from the start that if uh, that's that's the thing that they uh, intended with this story, then it's pretty obvious that uh, first of all, whoever wrote this is a really big fan of Mukuro in general, and second of all, they probably shipped them with Makoto. I don't, I don't so, think like, anyone who actually wrote, wrote the game wrote this or anything. Let me say, hold on. Okay. Uh, in the mean, in the meantime, I will uh, keep reading a couple lines. Yes. As soon as she heard Makoto's weak, fading voice, something inside Mukuro snapped. From within, the shell of the spare she had built up, an intense emotion began flowing out. I know that's your line. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was looking at. No, it's okay. I know this, you were. This is all wrong. She couldn't hold back the emotion any longer. No. No! And for the first time in her entire life, Mukuro unleashed a scream into the world. And she screamed! Colored in, colored in diamond, not colored in diamond! Okay, so the person who wrote this is named Ryogo Narita, okay. and apparently he's just some writer. He has nothing to do with Danganronpa. Oh, okay. I guess he, he wrote a Bleach spin off. Okay. 
if you even know what that is. I, I, I had a friend who was into that, but I know, like, nothing about uh, it. I've known plenty of people who were into it, but apparently it sucks. Oh, okay. I, 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 will, I will make no comment on it, because I don't, like, I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other, and I don't want to piss anybody off by saying... Or, or, or like, it becomes shit, or whatever. Oh, okay. But yeah, so apparently he's just some guy. About to say, because if fucking Kodaka wrote this, I will kill him. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> this, I, was yeah, I, think, I think he wrote Zero and it was shit. Oh, okay. Well, I haven't read that one. Uh, when did we Don't do that? that? I when? think uh, we, would, we would read that after this. After this, okay. Oh, boy. We get a, uh, a novel marathon, but uh, anyways. Yeah. As Mukura fell to her knees and clutched her head, a small shadow started walking toward her back. The stuffed animal that had been under her foot. Monokuma. The one and only. Except one of many, but shush. His claws were extended and he was no longer walking with his usual waddle. Instead, he moved like a beast, silently stalking its prey as he slowly advanced within his target's blind spot. Did he activate, like, the, uh... Oh, I guess we can't talk about this because we technically haven't gotten there yet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm about to say, right? He activated the, uh... Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We we may have recorded uh, a couple episodes of a different game before this, but... Uh, <laughs> yes. For the sake of keeping this in the in canon in, in the same timeline, no, I'm not gonna... <laughs> I won't make that comment. <laughs> As he inch closer to Mukuro... Monokuma raised his razor-sharp claws, crossed on his haunches, crossed. I don't know what I just... Crouched, excuse me. <laughs> crossed. And suddenly leapt toward the back of her neck. However, just before those claws could reach the paralyzed Mukuro, a dark shadow moved in from the side and swatted away those claws with one blow. His lunge deflected, Monik deflected. Monokum was sent flying through the air and spinning wildly before crashing into a wall. Uh, Sakura Hamano? No, in, in, in me for random anime, by the way. No, it's Sakura. Okay. I figured it would be, like, Sakura Hamano, yeah. Yeah. One of the two that would fight people, yeah. If it was, if it was, oh, actually, would have been like, what the fuck? Oh, actually, it does make sense that it would be Sakura, yeah. I just realized that she oh, would Oh, yeah, make Sakura! Sense. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, we, we, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Damn you! What are you trying to do? <laughs> Sakura Ogami, the ultimate martial artist, had just prevented another tragedy. She stood before Monokuma and addressed him in a loud, booming voice. Not only did you attempt to kill Junko for violating school regulations, you even attacked Makoto had nothing to do with this. Oh, yes. Double space, you even attacked Makoto. <laughs> Have you planned to continue acting in such a savage manner? There's no way for us to play along with your game. Miyake Takama, the ultimate fluent progeny, smirked condescendingly at Sakura. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? What did she do that's beneath you? Exist? Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> Fool. One could say, you've now violated school regulations with your senseless actions. He looks as if he honestly didn't care whether this fellow student lived or died at all. Which is true. Uh, it's the last. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I clicked ahead to see who said it. Well, she merely deflected a headmaster's attack just now, so I don't think that truly counts as an act of violence. Even though, yes, it kind of does, but okay. <laughs> Whatever. I like how they just both don't give a shit. Yes. Like Byakia, Solo seemed unfazed as she chided him over his words. What for the man? Makoto! Oh. Oh. No. no, I've gotten. <laughs> okay. Makoto! Makoto does something! <laughs> what for the banter between the two was enough to stir the stunt student's action. Sayaka was the first one to run to Makoto, who lay bleeding from his stomach. Okay, so I guess his stomach got pierced. You weren't clear about that. I guess those were the other bodily fluids, then. No, I thought it was his side. His side and his stomach are two different areas. Yeah, that's why I was like, wait, uh, wait, his side... Like, what other bodily fluids did it get? But I guess stomach acid and stuff, then. Yeah. But Monokuma stopped her, shouting in a tone of voice that seemed completely out of character. Be careful! Don't, like, get too close to those two! 
I'm assuming it's close. I'm assuming he talked close to Junko. Yes, but uh, I should do my impression. <laughs> yes. Be, be careful! Don't get, don't get too close to those two. <laughs> Startled by Monica was desperate tone, Psych and the other stopped moving almost instinctively. The students looked around at each other and said, "Glenn, instead of his usual playful gait, gait, guy, I don't know." When I came okay. walk towards him with a deliberate, methodical steps, and then suddenly blurted out something that took everyone, including Mukuru Kasaba, by surprise. I'm sure you're probably confused by this sudden turn of events, but I wanted you guys to work together. <laughs> it's beautiful. As Mukuru slowly turned the hat towards Monokuma, he pointed at her and yelled, Mukuri Gisaba and her accomplice Makoto Naegi are the terrorists responsible for locking you, like, all up inside the academy. <laughs> Once again, time stopped for Mukuro. But this time, she wasn't the only one affected. Everyone seemed to be frozen in shock. After a few seconds of silence, Hari Asahina, the ultimate swimming pro, spoke first. Huh? You're, you're kidding, right? I mean, Makoto is a terrorist? That's impossible. And who's Mukuro, anyway? I mean, that's Junko. Monokuma began slowly explaining. The, the real Junko must be imprisoned somewhere in this school. Worst case scenario, she might be killed. It's like the weirdest place to keep up. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Mukuro must have researched which one of you would be the easiest for her to impersonate and hit among you, all pretending to, like, be her. She was probably trying to make sure the killing game went smoothly. Suddenly, Monokuma's hands and feet began jerking in awkward motion as he looked at the other students and introduced himself. <laughs> oh! Oh, I guess it it's, shouldn't... It, it, I guess that it... would be... Uh... Oh, wait, what? I guess it shouldn't sound like like a weird like Junko voice then. I, I I didn't see I didn't know this was gonna happen. I'm sorry. I just told you what I thought made sense. Okay. Yeah. I, no, that made sense too. I thought it was okay. But uh, let's see. Voice. Um. I already have. Uh, I can't. I I would say like do the Hifumi voice, but like that's not really gonna work here. Um. Yes. A uh, hacker. I could do my shitty Pegasus impression. No, no, because like I, I, I assume when this character actually talks, I need like an actual voice for this character. So like, I need to have one that I can like. Let's see, shit. No, lead hacker skills is Kaiba. I can't do that one either. Um, I'm, t I'm trying to find some sort of connection here. Uh. You know what? Fuck it. That's but this just... is just Junko. But, 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 but isn't this just Junko pretending? Oh right, that's true. I guess we're just gonna keep up this way. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I'm Vishiki Madurai, the ultimate hacker. I'm your upperclassman. I hacked into the academy from the outside and was. Oh shit! I just skipped that dialogue. Um, will you read the rest for me? Um, from the outside. Now it's finally able to like take control of Monokuma's body a while ago. Take control? From who? From the head of the terrorist organization that's controlling this robot from the outside. What? What are you saying, Junko? Also, also, I like how his voice, like, it's almost like the, uh, the Kiyando voice, where, like, it's clearly two different voices, and I'm, like, flip-flopping back and forth. Right? It sounds like, it sounds like, uh, Junko and Monokuma are sharing souls, and you're somehow doing two voices at the same time. It's pretty fucking amazing. Oh my god, I'm, I'm, I'm really trying with this, but it's no, really No, like, hard. it's fantastic, keep going. Okay. Mukura trembled as she heard the words coming out of Monokuma's mouth. For a brief moment, she clung to the hope that her sister wasn't trying to kill her, but as soon as that hope was born, it was immediately consumed by despair. Jinko had the power to transform hope into despair. She would never let anyone hack her that easily. There's only one explanation. Jinko Enoshima was pretending to be someone named Bashiki in order to frame B Mukuro and Makoto. I don't even think that's a Japanese name! The shiki part, sure, but the best part? Maybe there was like a you there. 
in the Japanese oh, version. Oh, oh, Basushiki. Yeah, that would actually maybe. Be the name. But I guess it got. Lo I guess it got localized stupidly. Because I guess you would pronounce it this way, anyways. Because yeah, because in Japanese, views, yeah. sometimes like the the, the U is yeah. silent. No, that's why I said it probably was a U in the Japanese version. It was, it was as though Junko was using Mukuro's survival as a branching path to lead the students to different despair. Monica would continue talking, telling the students more lies and trying to prod them to action. On your first day at Hope Spring Academy, you guys were, sharing, were exposed to sleeping gas, knocking unconscious and taking hostage. Mukuro and Makoto are probably the only operatives the terrorists sense inside the school. That means they probably know how to escape from here. Got this voice. Do you want me to just? Do you want me to just talk as Junko? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just laughing at my own voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Because it's. If it's, it gets too difficult, I'll just take over. No, it's not difficult. It's just like I feel like it sounds like something else, but I can't pinpoint what it is. <laughs> and then um, Wanakuma tried to face Mukuro. Mukuro Gusawa was a member of a mercenary group called Fenrir. She was a, she was a wanted criminal who's killed over ten, the, over ten people associated with the school. I was right, 10,000 people. <laughs> That's a bit much. <laughs> I've killed over 10,000 people. So don't get too soft and think you can capture her alive. In fact, that's exactly what the cops told me. So the moment I saw an opening, I tried to hack the trap they set and, and tried to kill her. But, what about Makoto? Mono no, that wasn't, uh... Oh, actually, wait, no, I forgot that. It sounded like Kyoko, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, the exact inflection. Oh, no. Yeah. Monokuma gave a cold, emotionless answer to Saika's question. My guess is that this amazingly little ultimate lucky student didn't stand a chance at defying a group like Fenrir. He was probably threatened to cooperate before you entered the school, or judging from his earlier actions, maybe Mukuro seduced him. Saiga's face went pale when she heard that answer. She immediately stopped talking. <laughs> maybe, or maybe Mukuro seduced him. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> Mukuro raised her head and shouted, You're wrong! Makoto isn't a terrorist! You have to believe me! Uh, look, sister, we, uh, we didn't believe him when he was clearly not a killer uh, at a different point, and I don't think we're gonna start now. <laughs> the whole gym felt silent, and then, as so was speaking for everyone, Taka stepped forward and nervously asked, uh, Hold on! What do you mean, Makoto? Isn't it terrorist? It sounds like a sign that there's no doubt that in fact you are a terrorist. I want you to correct you yourself at once and say, We are not terrorists! <laughs> so let's begin expressing our own doubt as well. It is strange. It doesn't seem. Does it not seem odd that she's so protective of someone we all just met a few days ago? Mukuro stood in silence. The other students began faces began to fill with suspicion and doubt. As they realized that something about Jinko and Shima. <laughs> Miyake pushed up his glass and began coldly pointing out what seemed out of place to him. I heard that Foma Kodo, or whatever his name is, call you Mukuro instead of Junko. How would Makoto know that your name is really Mukuro if he just met you not that long ago? Damn it, I didn't mean to rhyme. I hate rhyming. <laughs> it's your line. Uh, you oh no! Oh no, yes. You just stuttered that, that's all. Oh, th that's... I've also heard of Fenrir. Continued Biakia. As I recall, it's members of a tattoo somewhere in their body. Instinctively, Biakia's words put Mukuro in a calm state of mind. In hostile situations, with defensive reflexes as the ultimate soldier often manifested themselves. Mukuro's tattoo was on the back of her right hand. She wondered how she could hide this from the other students without also calling attention to it. The fact that it's covered in makeup and nobody would immediately notice it unless they touched you, 
like very intently and like rubbed it off. So, mm. but in the end, this concern was in vain. If the police records are true, she should have the two on the back of her right hand. Is it always on the back of her right hand? I don't yes. actually. Okay. Oh wait. If the police records, uh, if the police records are true, she should have a tattoo on the back of her right hand. It's not like I'm more freely divulge that information. Alright! Cried Taka, his voice up with enthusiasm. Show the back of your hand right now and prove your innocence! God, he, he, he believes in the goodness of people so bad. <laughs> <laughs> When I come with the Spence, another unnecessary remark. Hey! <laughs> Make sure you look real close. She might have covered it up with foundation. Like, future foundation? Uh huh. <laughs> Junko had all the Mukuro to hide a tattoo with foundation, so Monokuma's information was entirely true! There was nothing Mukuro could do except stay quiet. However, she wasn't staying quiet because her identity was about to be exposed. She was struck by the realization that her sister was completely serious about pinning this on her. Shouted the foolishly honest Taka. Yeah, he really is. That's my classmate! I have complete faith in you! From behind him, Hifumi Yamada, the ultimate fan for created, murmured to himself as a cold sweat ran down his cheeks. Oh god. I don't like I don't like what you're about to say, whatever it is. <laughs> Where? Look at that. I get this is what you call a checkmate, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, I figured. I figured it was. <laughs> For some reason, I was thinking the second game, so I was like, "Aren't you supposed to say this?" But like, yeah, <laughs> like with like either uh, <laughs> either Fuyiko or Akane, no. <laughs> something. <laughs> okay. Why don't you just fuss up already, you fucking bastard! In contrast to Hifumi, Mano Iwata, the ultimate biker gang leader, the biker gang leader, okay, was royally pissed! <laughs> However, there were some students who were busy questioning Monokuma instead of Mukuro. Hey, you're not coming to save us! Or, hey, you're not coming to save us? shouted Leon Kawada, the ultimate baseball star. You should hurry up and, ch and charge in here already! Monokuma would look at Leon and shook his head softly. <laughs> the police can't help you right now. Not only are you guys hostages, it's entirely possible that the skulls have been wrecked with explosives and poisonous gas. I hacked into this Monokuma robot to investigate it for myself. That's you. It's a Sayaka. Oh no. It's Sayaka. Yes. Uh. Oh, I can't. I, I. Sorry. I, w I went to what I thought was my next line, so I wouldn't have to fumble with the video. Oh, okay. Twice now. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Then, what about ev everyone on the DVD? What about everyone outside the school? Uh, uh Sayaka. <clears throat> the memory of the DVD she was forced to watch yesterday still weighed heavily on her mind, but. Monokuma hadn't, didn't have a clear answer anyways. I don't know about anything about DV any DVDs, but they're definitely ter- No oh, wait, I don't know anything about DVDs, but there definitely are terrorists causing havoc out there. Law enforcement around the world is in shambles trying to deal with this. That's impossible! Saga so shuddered and collapsed to her knees. Sayaka. Next to her, Chihiro Fujisaki, the ultimate programmer, was unsure about what she should do. I like how for a second it threw me for a loop. I'm like, wait, she? <laughs> I'm like, oh, Aww. right. <laughs> Behind her, two other girls stood silently, because I guess we don't care about them in this story, because one of them is, is the actual love interest. <laughs> the first was Toga Vakawa, the ultimate writing prodigy. She seemed to be trying very hard not to look at Makoto as he lay bleeding. I was about to say, yeah, that's actually... That's a good point. <laughs> the other was a quiet girl who hadn't talked about herself much, named Kyoko Kirigiri. 
Like Toko, Kyoko was watching everything intently, as if she was trying to study a scene of a crime. And because of these breathing patterns, no subtle changes in Mukuro's facial expression, and nothing was escaping her attention. Suddenly, Toko began nervously talking to Sakura. So anyway, let's just say this Mukuro woman or whoever over there is a terrorist. Hurry up and beat her to death or something. I was about to say, why is she talking to Sakura out of all people? That, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I know. I was like, why is she talking to Sakura? Yes. Well, we, uh, we don't know that yet, said Sakura. My fists do not just... Meet? meet? Me 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 what, what is that word? Uh... Met. My fists do not met out justice based on simple speculation. Sakura tried to get near Makoto to examine his wounds, but Monokuma stood in a way, shouting, D Don't come any closer! It's meant that Mukuro was the only one who could get close to Makoto. She had ended countless lives on the battlefield. She knew from experience. If she didn't treat Makoto's wounds, he would die. Would she actually know anything about treating wounds? I thought she was more about inflicting them. She's probably treated her own wounds. That is true. As I asked my question, I actually figured that was the answer. But... Yeah. The wounds were not immediately fatal, but if he continued losing blood, he would just eventually slip into shock and die shortly thereafter. I assume that's her. Please, you need to treat Makoto first. Absolutely not, said Byakuya, harshly interrupting Mukuro. Tying you up and examining the back of your right hand is our first priority. Hey, Makoto's in danger. No, now's not the time for that. Oh, is that she cast so worried? Glance at Makoto. She's still having trouble in, on the sand in this situation. And hadn't decided if Makoto was suspicious or not. Yakuza yeah, is about to snap back at her, but Mukuro's actions stunned him into silence. She took a deep breath, and then... Mukuro removed the blonde wig from her head. Where there were two long blonde ponytail or pigtails only a moment before, there was now short black hair. She cleared her face of all emotions, and when she spoke her voice rang throughout the gym. I guess now you're gonna lose the valley, girl, then. <laughs> no, she, I, I already stopped talking about like that, but now oh, yeah, I'm like, I how did I do it in the support conversation? Because, like, I liked how I did it there, but I can't seem to mimic it. Oh, shit. I'm not Junko Inoshima. My name is Mukuro Ikusaba. The students stared wide out of their open confession. All she did was remove her wig and clear her emotions. But in doing so, the person the students had recognized as Junko Inoshima vanished from their sight. The terrorist that had taken her place continued to speak in a calm, stoic tone. I helped lock everyone inside this academy. The confession, uh, oh. The confession at Seaside Cliff. <laughs> you confession at Seaside Cliff, no one has finally arrived. I, I just didn't suspect that Hifumi would start talking. Hifumi blurted out as I spat all over my screen. <laughs> <laughs> Rage are against school regulars as Junko! I mean, Mokuro! shouted Taka. As if stirred by the cries of excitement, the other students began clamoring among themselves. Huh? said Yasuhiro. So, Makoto's wounds are like. real? Does that mean the stuff about the terrorists and whatever is all real too? So everything that's happened these past few days is a bunch of stage events? Uh, I think I just crabbed myself. As the reality of the situation began dawning on him, Yasuhiro... No, oh, beginning on Yasuhiro, all the young could say to him was, Shut the hell up! Bioka just remained calm and addressed Mukuru in a condescending manner. What does your group want? If you were after money, you would have already tried to negotiate with me. <laughs> of course, I'd rather let them die than surrender to your ransom demands. Our purpose is to fill the world with despair. <laughs> yeah, whatever. 
I see. Monica must have something similar, so... That ideology is what fuels your terrorism. It's true. If you did anything to me, it would certainly fill the world with despair. Everybody loves me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love you. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. But obviously that would be impossible for you. I couldn't believe what Piakia was saying and frowned that she mothered. How self-centered could you be? Also, I'm, I'm kind of like... I, I know why, because these are just the regular, the regular names! But, uh... I kind of hate how inconsistent it is. I wish they would have, like, stuck with one and not, like, kept going back and forth, like, between... Uh, on what? Versus of the canon. On the names of, uh... Of characters from the first game, specifically Hiro, Hina, etc. Because they keep using Taka, but they don't keep using the other ones. I wonder why that is. Yeah, that's a weird thing to point out. I guess because literally everyone calls him Taka. I guess so. I'm just gonna go with their uh, the names that we're used to. And because, uh, like... and uh, and um. But see, the thing is, is that uh, Hina being called Hina was a localization change. No, I know. And, uh, I know same these, thing with these were. Yeah. Yeah. But I assume, I thought Taka was as well. Uh, yeah, it was, which is really weird. So that's why I'm saying it's weird that, like, they have one, but not the other two. Even though they're, yeah. like, more major characters, so you'd be used to their names more. And also, uh, Owie is really hard to say. Ow, ow. <laughs> it's really hard no, to I say. No, should, I should just keep going and just make that noise every time it comes up. <laughs> no, I won't. No, don't. <laughs> After confirming that Miyakia had no more questions for her, Mukuro looked at Makoto, whose breathing had slowed and let her voice show some emotion. But Makoto has nothing to do with this. You can't believe what Monokuma says. What did you say, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Shouted Mom, though. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You're a terrorist, just like Monokuma said. I mean, I'm, a, I'm like a gang leader, so I guess it's kind of hypocritical for me to call you. I'm that kind of crap, but, you know. I'm still gonna do it. Muko looked away from Mon, though, and continued speaking. That's true, but Makoto wasn't involved at all. So that's coldly brushed her objection aside. I do not think trying to protect him will do you any good. After all, we all heard Makoto call you by your real name. I mean, if he called me by my real name, now then, eh, we probably have a problem, but, I don't know. Whatever. Oh, that's your line, I think. That's. Oh, um. Oh, that's. She had no words. There was nothing she could say to protect Makoto. Even though Makoto was truly innocent. When Mukuro was the ultimate soldier, her powers were largely limited to battle. Even a normal high school student could outwit her when it comes to debate and negotiation. If she were the ultimate negotiator, she might be able to convince them that her memories have really have been erased. I feel like even if you were the ultimate negotiator, you wouldn't have been able to fix this. Because yeah. I think Biakia would just call you, like, Adam being full like, of shit no, like, 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 no one would believe you, yeah, because Biakia just doesn't want to believe you. Like, no, even if the other people would, like, Biakia is not going to be convinced unless you... Yeah, no, so... But, like, no one would be able to do this, so yes. don't be too hard on yourself. In the current situation, if she tried to bring up the memory loss, they would think that there was a desperate excuse. Even Mukuro know that. Actually, <laughs> I don't think so. If she sp started spouting off things that she knew about everyone else, even though she would have no physical way of knowing that, then that probably could convince them, but then again, they're just not inclined to believe her at the moment. They, they might think that, like, they were just spying on them. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't... So that might make her look worse, but I just... Uh, I, I kind of agree that like, there's kind of know, no way out of this. Work. This way. Yeah, you could try yeah. that, but I don't think that would actually work. I don't think that would have worked, yeah. Anyways. Are we at my line? Yeah. Okay. Right now, we need to treat Makoto first. And then she started walking to what Makoto's if nothing had happened. To the others, it seemed like Mukuro had decided to abruptly change the subject. 
Hold it. We will immediately take Makoto to the nurse's office for treatment. However, we must tie you up. This is Sakura's honest demand. You know, Sakura, I never imagined you'd be into that sort of thing, but that's, uh... Oh yeah, I think that's kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> will you shut up? <laughs> yes, sir, ma'am. There was no way Mukuru could accept that. If she was separated from Makoto, there'd be no telling what Madakuma would do to him. If everybody else is there, I think he'll be, he'll be fine. And between Mondo's hot temper and Byakuya's cold heart, for which we must play a warm island song, <laughs> <laughs> Makoto could easily sustain further injuries under the pretense of interrogation. Furthermore, among these students... Also, I don't think Sakura would let that happen. No, because she kind of knows what's up. Like, she doesn't fully know, but she at least wouldn't let them, like, do that. No, because now she knows the jig is up, so she wouldn't let Monokuma get near him. Yeah. Mukuro knows she was the only one who had experienced treating wounds due to a time with Fenrir. After mulling that over, she narrowed her eyes and went silent. Her mind was made up. She was determined to fight her way out of here and escape with Makoto. Yeah, I apologize, that's why but I need you to fall no, that, asleep that time right now. Potential. She said that Sakura instantly positioned herself between, or behind, uh, Mukura. I thought she was, it said between, like, her and uh, Makoto. I misread. She was completely within a blind spot. To a normal person, it would have seemed like Sakura had suddenly vanished. They're moving faster than any human being could see. Sakura's equally fast hands launched a blow towards the back of Mukuro's neck. However... Sorry, Sakura, but I need to get out of here. Mikuro parried Sakura's fist with a spinning roundhouse kick. <clears throat> Sakura raised an eyebrow at the unexpected counterattack. Mikuro tried to use the momentum of her kick to sweep Sakura's feet out from under her. However, Sakura dodged and instinctively struck back against Mikuro's pivot leg. Mikuro was faster and jumped up, aiming a tornado kick at Sakura's chin. Sakura defected the attack with one arm, then both combatants leapt backwards, glared, and charged simultaneously. Every blow they dealt was parried and countered by the other, and even though they were both unarmed, the sound of their battle echoed throughout the gym. It's like a typhoon had been compressed to the size of a car and set loose inside the gym. That's an odd metaphor. That's some, that's some Jojo shit nah. right there. Yes. The other students were powerless to stop them. All they could do was stare at the breathtaking dance of death unfolding before them. Mondo would totally be in on that shit. He would just... <laughs> I don't think he would yes. care. He would just, like, jump in and start fucking shit up. He would summon his stand. Yes. Yeah, if anything, Mondo, what the fuck? You could heal Makoto. Yeah, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh my god, he can. <laughs> After ten minutes had passed, you know, the sound of one final impact ran throughout the gym. Two warriors lapped back once again and breathed heavily as they stared each other down. My mistake. Though it's only been a few days, I uh, cannot believe I did notice, not know that such an impressive fighter was hiding among us. In addition to the surprise Sakura felt, it was as if the battle had left her energized. Mukuro, on the other hand, looked down at her arm, confirming it had been wounded during the battle and thought to herself, She's strong. I don't think Sakura is even taking this seriously right now. Besides being constantly surrounded by firearms, blades, traps, and explosive damage during a time with Fenrir, it's the first time she had ever been wounded. Yeah, you go, Sakura. Nah. Mugen was powerless before the might of the woman known as the ultimate martial artist and the strongest woman in the world. Just as I thought, I can't beat Sakura with my bare hands alone. And then she shoots her. Yes. She pulls a Tommy gun out of her ass. Now that's some JoJo shit. <laughs> yes, that okay. is some JoJo shit. Alright. She had been directly ordered to kill Sakura. Mukuro would have opted to either snipe her from a distance or poison her. Ah. Uh. Well, This close range, she would need an assault rival just to stand a chance fight a fighting chance. I don't have time for this. Also, it's been ten minutes. I think Makoto's blood out by now. Yeah, basically. 
She looked at my curve and confirmed that his breathing had grown even shallower. I need to hurry. But at that moment, she had no one to turn to for help. Suddenly, Hukuro had an idea. An awful idea. <laughs> it was true that gaining an ally in this situation was impossible. However, she could still turn one person into her enemy's enemy. Oh, fuck. Yes. Oh my god. No! Don't do that! <laughs> Hold on, I can't hear you. Okay, sorry, my headset. Also, I wonder if they actually even knew that. But we'll see. Mugro took a deep breath before she charged Sakura. Then she immediately fainted and charged at a different girl. Toku had been covering in fear, been cowering in fear from the battle between Sakura and Mukuro in the corner of the gym. Also, how did nobody stop her in the <laughs> in the middle of her charge? Because nobody cares. About oh her. man! We should probably stop her right now. Nah, better get hit. <laughs> <It'll> be funny. <laughs> it will amuse me. <laughs> this is bad. Sakura was caught off guard and tried to run after her, but Mukuro was one step ahead and reached Togo first. Huh? Why me? I'm sorry. Uh, you're still going. <laughs> you're monologuing practically. Uh, what? You had one line left on that page. Oh, 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 okay. It, I skipped over my accent. Wait, hold on a little, little. Mukuro jabbed Toko in the in the solar plexus, and she fell into her arm. Taka and Hina yelled out in shock. This is bad. She plans to use Toko as a hostage. I'm glad you took the longer I, I, line. I, 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 don't, I don't know who had the longer line, but I <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I, I I'm glad you took it. <laughs> in contrast to their shocked faces, Ryakia just snickered and coldly remarked, "You fool." Do you really think we care if you take someone we just met a few days ago as your hostage? Particularly that one. <laughs> Mugo just softly glanced at Byakuya and replied, You didn't meet her a few days ago. What did you say? You met her two years ago. Huh? Oh, well, you know what, now that you mention it, I probably did. I wouldn't remember somebody like that. <laughs> <laughs> Byakuya scowled and ignored Mukuro and held a bloody Mukuro ignored him and held a bloody arm in front of Toko's face also I don't think your arm would necessarily bleed if you just got punched a lot unless she fell on uh, it unless if uh yeah how is her arm bleeding just from a punch because I'm like if you if she got scratched then sure but I don't think Sakura has very so, long nails and that would be kind of dirty fighting and that's not Sakura's style so no. unless so unless she like got punched down to like the floor and like it got like got scathed hit, yeah. then like plot hole wake up genocide jack it seems so random and out of place why would Mukuro mention the name of a notorious serial killer right now? The student looked at each other with confusion when suddenly... Toko had been groaning in pain, suddenly kicked off of the floor, the gym, with renewed vigor. She leapt into the air much higher than any normal being, human being should have been able to, while hovering several meters in mid-air. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Toko told faster than a professional figure skater. This causes her to flutter, revealing multiple pairs of sparkling scissors. Countless tally marks were scratched into her legs, like a kill count carved into a fighter jet. Yet for the situation, Toko's glamorous jumps and spins would have been a sight to behold. The girl, formerly known as Toko Makawa, cackled wildly, her eyes red, sparkling, as an absurdly long tongue flopped out, out of her mouth. You call for me, it's why I appear! I've got a murder eye of... Oh, you for why of you? <laughs> Who said that? Oh, Toko? Situation had changed so drastically that even Saiki was silent until now spoke up. 
But, uh, yeah, my qu my question still stands, like, would they have known about that? Because, like... Um, I'm assuming Mukuro and Junko could have found it out through their elite spying skills or something. Yeah, because, like, I think, like... Or maybe she, like, told, like, her, like them at some point. Or maybe she told Byakuya and Byakuya turned around and told everyone else. That could have been true, but, like, if they were all, like, friends, I don't see why that would have been a thing. Because, like, in this version, they're clearly not friends, but, like, if he were friends with everyone, which he might have been at that point, then, like, I what, don't know. Like, they were literally the only cl classmates in their class, because that's how Hope's Peak works, so they would have spent all day, every day together. Well, yeah, but, I mean, like... I which... don't know, it just, it, it, she, she just knows in this version, I don't okay. know. Okay, okay. Because, I mean, I was under the impression that it was... The very well written. Okay. I was just under the impression that it was, like, like nobody really knew, and the reason... No, because of course nobody would know. And because the only reason, again, the only reason Byakuya found out in the first place is because she literally up and told him. Which, like... Yes. I guess she might have, but I think... Didn't she only, like... Wasn't there some reason that she told him in it in the first place? The only reason she told him is because she accidentally turned into to Jill when uh, Chihiro died. And she, like, told it to him. It's like, see, basically, Byakuya had heard or he was there and saw it. And I guess he cornered her and was like, what happened? You need to tell me what happened. And then he, she told him why she did that. Yeah. So that would be the only reason. Because so, that's like, that's that's I mean, what I'm saying. Like, I don't think I don't think the instigator would have been there on the original, like... I mean, I'm assuming at some point during your school year, maybe she got a paper cut and then just jilled all over the place and would have had to tell her classmates. <laughs> jilled all over the place? Jilled all over the place. Okay, maybe. I don't know. Because, like, it seems like like at that point they would have probably, like, turned her into the police or something. Because <laughs> at uh, that... I'm assuming that they just won't because friendship. I guess. I don't know. Regardless. You're, uh, Toko? You... Oh yeah, no, uh... Oh, did I skip over a genocide jail line? <laughs> no, after that, uh... The situation had changed so drastically, they didn't sigh, it was silent until now, spoke up. Hey, hey, you flashed a pan, don't you genocide jack without pressing little four eyes? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. No. I don't have enough coffee in me, hold In which she leaves for five minutes to get okay. coffee. Actually, no, you want to no, take no, a no, coffee no. break? Because we're an no, hour. I just, no, I just chug, no, I have it here. I just chug some coffee. Okay, because we're we're like Don't almost an hour in. Oh, I gotta put it five times. You have to run myself down to the shower. Toka, Toka, sudden change expression sent the students clamoring among themselves. <laughs> hey, Leon yells. What the hell does that mean? Monokuma just shook his head. I'm still here for some reason. There are some things that I don't even understand. So we continue to panic at the strange turn of events. Togre now calling herself Genocide Jack, even though she wouldn't call herself that because she's the only one who refers to herself as the other thing, but alright. Took out a set of scissors on their skirt and sniped them and snipped them with booty as she looked around the gym. I don't know who says huh. <laughs> Man, it's been a while since I got to stretch my legs! So what were you guys doing here while I was snoozing away? Having an orgy? <laughs> <laughs> I understand, I totally understand. You guys need to cut me up for clothes so you can feel even naughtier. Yeah, uh, yeah, right, I ought to do that for you dumbasses. My sister's only meant for cutting up the supple tender flesh of adorable boys! <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? I don't know. I have way too much fun voicing her. She's my Monokuma. Yes, she really is. Genocide Jack was causing a ruckus, but when she saw Makoto laying on the floor, she tilted her head once again. Ah, uh, Big Mac, you're like totally about to die! What's the deal? Does the world fill you with so much despair? I'm here to like commit mass suicide? That's so hot! Why are you starting without me? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> oh my god. 
let's 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 keep this let's keep this train rack a rolling. <laughs> I think we need a break. So uh, we're an hour in, so we're gonna thank you guys all for watching. We'll see you guys all next time when the stream rack. No, we're right at the end of the chapter. We're right at the end of the chapter. Oh, okay. I thought you needed a break. Toko, get get a hold of yourself. Yeah, you get a hold of yourself. Genocide Jack just, <laughs> just ignored Hina and let her emotions run unchecked, jumping and dancing with excitement. She held her scissors. Ah, jeez. What is that big back side by south? This spot right here, where the grips are kind of showing already. He's not screaming right now, though. What does that mean? Oh, uh, also, uh. Oh? <laughs> well then. <laughs> I, I, I guess she also has a thing for Makoto in this version. Well, he is a cute boy. I guess that's true. Oh, I like how that didn't start with a quote. It's still your line. Oh, what? No, that didn't start with a quote, but it's still your line. Oh, it didn't start with a quote, okay. Oh, well, maybe I can just use this feeling of alienation instead. <laughs> <laughs> I like I have like no idea what's going on anymore. Shout out hero. This is all the aliens fault. <laughs> I get it. Cuz I said alienation and he said alien. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Well, I mean, like thanks. I mean, I I don't really uh I mean not to uh to bash on myself, but uh I'm not that adorable, right? So you'll uh I'll be fine. Yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> you buried his head into his arms, but no one's paying attention to him. Why oh, is nobody ever paying attention to me? I'm an important character, I swear. Hey, I was one of the guys who lived. That makes me important, right? The student attention was entirely focused on Genocide Jack. Using that to her advantage, Mikuro began sneaking over to Makoto. When she cautiously picked him up, she confirmed that his body temperature was starting to decrease. Oh shit. Is there a line? Yes. I can oh, still make fuck, it there in time. No, it's just I can oh. still make it there. Oh, oh. I can still make it there in time. Now she was carrying another person, Mugura managed to soften the sound of her footsteps as she ran towards the gym. So how can you run and soften your footsteps? Or run and soften your footsteps, right? <laughs> By the time the students heard Mukuro open the door, it was already too late. She had managed to escape the gym with Makoto. Well, not everyone was unaware of what Mukuro was doing. Monokuma saw her move inside of the corner of her eye, but chose not to tell the students. And one other person, Kyoko Hirayuri, got rather jealous at this point. <laughs> she saw Mukuro carry Makoto away, but did not inform the others as she watched him leave in silence. So everyone wrestled with their own personal thoughts and speculations. The Speak Academy began walking a path towards a completely different chaos, and everyone was murdered in the gym at that very moment. Okay, now, now we're at the end. Diamond Shape, open Diamond Shape, like always. Thank you guys all for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.